you did propose that uh, we go the parliamentary initiative way in the introduction of certain offices, to be specific, office of the opposition and also office of the cabinet secretary. So my question is, the moment the opposition is strengthened, and we know what happens in parliament, especially after elections, the moment these offices are strengthened and they are being financed by the government, especially the office of the opposition, then what happens in such a situation where the parliament will want to come and amend, bring an amendment to the same? Won't we be interfering so much with this office and watering down its powers? And it might end up being even scrapped off again. So I think we need to look into that. And my opinion is to go uh, uh, the referendum way. When it comes to the finance bill, Professor, you know very well that Kenyans are suffering because of the high cost of living. And every year, with the increment of the taxes, leads to serious increment of expenditures without an increment in income in the pockets of common wananchi. Right now, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is introducing a tax on bread. We know what led because of taxation of bread. We know the French Revolution, if I may remind you. And during the French Revolution, it was caused mainly because of economic inequality and social injustice. When common wananchi were demonstrating to demand that the cost of bread be lowered in France during the reign of King Louis the 16th, the revolution started in 1789 when the people said that you must lower the cost of bread. But the wife to the king, Marie Antoinette, came out boldly and said that if you guys can't afford bread, why don't you eat cake? That is what Ruto is trying to tell us now. That if we can't afford bread, we need to eat cake. And I urge Kenyans, His Excellency Kalonzo said it rightfully. This nation can only be changed if there are demonstrations, no negotiations. We need to swing and stop singing. Thank you. I think that one needs no answer. That was a comment. Honorable Mayaka. Um, thank you very much. I just want to make three very quick comments. Number one is, um, I know we've uh, glazed through the, the, the bills, but I, it is my hope that we'll actually get the, the drafts so that we can familiarize ourselves very well with it. Second one is um, we need to be very cautious, especially during the Committee of the Whole House, because I noticed during the IBC Committee of the Whole House, we had members who tried to sneak in some mischief. So that is where we really need to focus on so that they don't sneak in the mischiefs that they want to focus for us. And finally, on the finance bill, I know there's a lot of focus on Mukate, and that is exactly what they want us to do so that they hide all the other things in, in the actual bill. The devil is actually in the detail. And Honorable Wandai did share with us a document from Bowman's that I think we all need to familiarize ourselves with because that is where they've really hidden the things that are going to affect Kenyans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Mayaka. Honorable Mayaka is basically saying, suppose Watoe Mkate, will you be okay with that finance bill? So you need to look at that. Honorable Kajwang. Uh, thank you, Professor. The NADCO report made mention of issues of boundaries. And uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President, I'd like to report that the Senate has already processed the county boundaries bill. I was a sponsor of the bill, and the bill has now been transmitted to the National Assembly. And I'd like to request uh, Honorable Wandai that when the bill comes before the National Assembly, it be given priority. This bill has flopped about five times from the 11th, 12th, and now the 13th parliament. And I also request, if you could appoint a co-sponsor, because we changed the standing orders, if there's a co-sponsor, a bill moves faster than just it being a Senate bill. And so I'll be consulting with you, if you can get a co-sponsor for it. Because there's a mistaken view that this bill seeks to redefine the boundaries of counties. The boundaries of counties, unfortunately, in the current constitution, were not defined, but then the uh, District and Provinces Act, which is drawn from the Independence Constitution. So the bill has not altered a single inch 
of a county boundary, and the bill also has not made those provisions that led to its rejection in the past. Because I think in the past, the National Assembly argued it was a money bill, but I believe that this being one of the things the NADCO process uh, prioritized, we can get a bipartisan and a bicameral approach to it. Secondly, there is also the entrenchment of funds in the Constitution. And I think this is a bright idea because it, it uh, ensures that legislators at the national level and at the county level are influenced from the interference of the executive, particularly the World Development Fund. This has also flopped, I think, twice or thrice in the 11th and 12th Parliament. We need to find a way of making sure that this succeeds. Finally, on statutory instruments, there is debate going on even in the UK right now where we draw our, our parliamentary practices. That parliament has become lazy. And in many cases, we write laws and leave power to cabinet secretaries to come up with regulations. And then we do not go ahead to check those regulations coming from the executive. I wish we could align the amendments, the Statutory Instruments Act, by amending clause 12 and putting it in statute that the delegated legislation committees of parliament shall be chaired by persons who are not in parties that form government. Because right now, it is absurd that in the Senate, the person who chairs the delegated legislation committee is a member of government. They are incapable and they do not have the spine to stand up to the executive. And a lot of delegated legislation takes effect due to lack of consideration. Because after 21 days, the, the regulations take effect. And so, uh, Honorable Luandai and Honorable uh, Madzayo, this is a debate which we either take to an amendment of the standing orders, but I know it will be difficult, or we put it in statute so that uh, that committee, alongside the Public Accounts Committee, Public Investments Committee, and Implementation Committees, they cannot be chaired by the executive. They need to be chaired by persons from this side. Thank you. So the leadership has had you, they'll respond. Honorable Muliungi. Thank you. Um, I will start with the Hanimo in the, in the, in the house. Um, we from Asimio, we have been singing the song, Open the Server. And the server has not been opened. Have you sanitized who controls the server in, in, in your amendments? Number two, on the matter raised by Senator Keo uh, on IBC, where the, uh, the chair and the vice chair cannot come from the same political party, I propose that um, the same applies to the political party's regulatory authority, so that the chair and the vice chair will not come from the same party or coalition. Finally, on the matter of defections, um, I wanted clarification on um, uh, on working with the the other side, because I've seen a situation whereby even a nominated member of parliament from Azimio is working with the government. How how do you deal with that kind of a situation? Thank you. Same way, same way of the registration. We go to Honorable Antonio Luach, then Senator Umtata, then Senator Faki, then Honorable Fatuma, then the Whip, then uh, Osos. Uh, thank you. Um, I just